on a mission, on a quest, on a search for discovering the truth. Join us on our journey to discovering a savior. All right, welcome to Your Church Friends. I'm Chris. I'm Mjordlug. So it's getting hotter again, and I feel like we always complain about how hot it is every summer, but it really does throw off our like recording routine because we get so used to like recording at a certain time and then we have to make exceptions because places we record in are just way too hot to record at those times and then like we 91 degrees like with a 91, broken ac yeah like a <laughs> let's turn on the ac yes. and make it hotter <laughs> only only where we in california can you turn on the ac and make it hotter when it's broken yeah i i've been saying that that room was not blowing that ac was not blowing air into that thing at all like it was just really hot yeah, I was telling Casey, and she was like, maybe it just didn't work so good that it turned on the heater instead. Maybe. It could have, or that's just how it's working. But yeah, so it's a little bit hotter, and uh, I don't do well in the heat, man. I just get lethargic. I get, like, no energy to want to do anything. Like, I just feel like internally I'm just, like, done. Are you trying to set up to, like, you're not going to have a good episode right now? No, no, because this is a part two, so we've already recorded that one. So we're good. That one was good. More of like... I was trying to retroactively give you an excuse. (laughs) (laughs) I was there for the conversation. I wasn't commenting on it at all, but if you wanted to take that opportunity... It wasn't good. No, just more that it's hot, and I just like to complain about the heat, and I feel like the summer is my time where I get to do it. But uh, yeah, we're here. We're going to continue on with Where Do Demons Come From? Part 2. So enjoy. Now it will be a three part series. <laughs> it might be. I've got a I've got a rant at the end that uh might be offensive to our deliverance audience. Real quick. Once there was a secret chord that David played to please the Lord. Yes, there it is. Um that probably <laughs> didn't sound any better, but all that orange chicken I ate earlier. Yeah. I just felt like when I went to go kind of sing that earlier, I was like there's a secret card. <laughs> you smeagled it? Yeah, and I was just like, I don't like that that's what people thought that my singing was. Like. Not that it got any better, but the whole time I'm just like, that was a horrible piece of uh, not singing. Orange chicken. Yeah. So when you get into the New Testament. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had to relieve that, no, that from no, my I'm, brain. I'm so with you on that. I do that sometimes too. Uh, we see these demons in action. They're causing physical pain. Uh, Muteness, blindness, torment, sickness, Uh, they're self-destructive, you see them a lot, isolating, insanity, sudden outbursts, convulsions, crying out loud, grinding teeth, foaming at the mouth, uh, prophesying, and and even becoming like just like, you know, like stiff, like hard and and not not moving. They were also seen as unclean spirits because of where most of the demons were associated with, like you see them in the deserts, in the tombs, in desolate places, and uh, that would make a person ritually unclean. So if they were in the unclean places, that that would make them unclean. Uh, For Paul, demons were real, but he looked at them as they were defeated uh, by what Jesus did in the resurrection. Uh, You look at 1 Corinthians 10, 21 through 20, it says, Now but the sacrifice of pagans are offered to demons, not to God, and I do not want you to participate with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup uh, of demons too. You cannot be part of the Lord's table and the demons table or the table of demons. And then in First Timothy, he says, the spirit clearly says that in the later times, some will abandon their faith to follow deceiving spirits and the things taught by demons. So, you know, you have this demonic activity that's happening in the New Testament. They knew about it. Um, And you see what they were actually doing, where they were coming from. Um, And it's also believed that that the world would increase in demonic activity in the last days in uh, Second Baruch, I think, right? Did I finally nail that one? Uh, 27.9, he has in the eighth part, so he goes through the parts of time and world and everything. He says in the eighth part, a multitude of ghosts and the appearance of demons will happen. So this is kind of going back to that head giant who made the deal with God that uh, the deal comes with the deadline. There's a final judgment, and these spirits will be punished forever in the abyss. Um, So there is a time frame. So when we see Jesus then interacting with these demons, a lot of them, the common question is, have you come before the time? 
Have you come before the end time? Have you come before to punish us, to torture, to torture us? Um, and we see this over and over in every gospel from Mark to Matthew to Luke, um, the one with the pigs where uh, they, they said that will cast us out to the pigs and then the pigs run off into the, the waters, which, you know, they felt like the, the waters was the like gateway to the abyss type thing. So did we cover Legion on the villains? I don't think we did. We should have, though. That would have been a good one. I know that we've talked about that whole episode mm-hmm. in some depth. I just can't remember where, why. I don't know. When. Somewhere. Yeah. But that's all the demon stuff yeah. I have. Yeah. I think that was a pretty good like lead up to it. Mm-hmm. I, just as you were saying all of those different things, I know that you were quoting things outside of you know scripture, but then also within scripture of lining up. It just makes me think there's that one scripture that says like um, you sacrifice to like the so-called gods, mm-hmm. even though they're nothing or something along yeah, those yeah. lines. And it's just so interesting to me that all of the breadth of everything that you've brought up, even if you're just to st- stick to scripture, there are people who will quote that one verse and be like, they're not real. Yeah. And it's just like, ooh, it's not too good to base a whole thought process on a single verse, especially when there are all of those other ones. Yeah. It's more so of like, how do these things work together? Not just like, this one says what I like. Yeah. yeah. And, and I feel like when it comes to topics like this, um, that have led to so many just odd ide- ideas and theologies and just weird thought processes that, Taking one verse and kind of solidifying your theology based off of that is where you're going to run into problems. Which sometimes there only is one verse Mm -hmm. and it's on something important. Like you can look at the resurrection of all the dudes. Uh, Was that Matthew 27? Mm -hmm. Like the tombs open up and everyone leaves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, everyone just comes out of the tombs and starts wandering around Jerusalem and like telling them stuff. It's just like, hey, can we get more info? No, you, you can't. So it's just like, you would like more verses, but there's not. So in that kind of situation, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you're working from that. But in other situations where there is quite a bit that you can piece together mm-hmm. to just kind of go on one side of it and be like, yes, I have complete theology now. Yeah, Here, and, Here's a doctrine. And, and that's a great verse to bring up because, it, it, again, it's one of those things where, like, it's brought up and it's left for us 2,000 years later to be like, what now? But the original people reading that were like, oh, yeah, yeah, I get that. and. That's where like the this real um, gap is coming into play is what time and what time has created uh, because there's no answer to that weird theologies, weird philosophies, weird thinking of things, trying to fill in the gaps that are there um, and and kind of losing really what was the idea and what the picture of what scripture is saying and comparing it as a whole of what's happening. Um, and, and you run into a lot of that again, these, these kind of topics like demons. Like it, angels, you know, they create some of this weird because it's unknown. It's really like where, how, when the Bible doesn't give us full information on everything. That being said, it does give us some information. And I think that what we Mm -hmm. quoted from this demon is really interesting. It's kind of how you talked about before, um, like demon faith. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, they, they believe that God is real. But so interesting here, just the recognition that. Here's the first demon. I'm sure that as we keep discovering the our savior, like we will run into more demons mm-hmm. who have. And you kind of said a lot of the things that they they have to say in situations, but uh, cried out in a loud loud voice, "What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God." And just like the demon has some pretty good Christology going. Yeah, it's like hey, look. Here is this human, Jesus of Nazareth, and I know who you are, the Holy One mm-hmm. of God. And just like, wow, that really seems like holy God, fully man. Yeah. <laughs> Theologically, right that demon is pretty accurate, right? Yeah. 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 And it goes to show us what we saw with the devil. Like, they know who Jesus is. It's not like they don't know. But yeah, James is like, I think James is kind of the best place to kind of go into to get a good answer of that is like demon faith. Like, we can have demon faith where we know who God is. We know the theological thing, but we haven't surrendered to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, even in the, I, I read it somewhere, even in the response to Jesus, like 
what do you want with us? You know, Jesus of Nazareth, uh, son of the most holy one. Like, I- I've always read it as like a uh, fear and trembling kind of saying it. Like, the demon said it as in fear. But I read in a commentary where it was more of like, the, at least the commentary kind of explained it as, it was like aggressive hatred towards Jesus. Like, son of God, why are you here, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come, the deal, you know, if you're going to, use the jubilee kind of thing to fill in the gaps. Hey, the time hasn't come yet. Why are you here so early? Our deal's still still good type thing. Mm. So it was like an aggressive attack. So, you know, just looking at it and, you know, now that we've kind of got the like uh, semi lower level tier seminary things done and I could get back into what I really like. The just, background. Yeah, the background. <laughs> <laughs> just the teaching of things. Um, I feel like we as Christians can do that too or we as people. We could have the right theology, we could have the right knowledge, but still have a hatred towards who Jesus is and who God is. Which is where I think that Jesus' answer is good. Yeah. Be silent. (laughs) (laughs) That is a good answer. (laughs) Be silent and come out of him. At this, the demon threw the man down before them all and came out without harming him. Mm -hmm. All the people were overcome with amazement and asked one another, What is this message? With authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out, and the news about Jesus spread throughout the surrounding region. Yeah. So it's interesting. What is this message, right? Mm -hmm. Because, again, he's preaching on the Sabbath in the synagogue, and a demon-possessed man comes up. So here's this guy going, the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Or, like, what was he preaching in his hometown? Isaiah. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, hey, here's the good news. This mm-hmm. is happening, right? Yeah. So I think that you brought up during that. I was like, yeah, was he kind of preaching this where he went, you Going know, to other around, places? Yeah. Whatever it was, he's preaching the kinds of things that Jesus preaches. And like, well, he's trying to tell us about this kingdom of God, that things are happening. And now like demons are coming out of people. And that like, what is the, it's interesting. He goes, what is this message versus who's this guy? Right. And that's what tripped me out, too, a little bit as I was in the study because I saw, like, well, demons, they were only in these places. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they were only in those places. And then all of a sudden I, I start reading and I'm like, and then one showed up in the synagogue. Like, they're in the unclean place. Mm-hmm. And then one pops in when Jesus is proclaiming the good news um, and, and kind of getting that mission and that what he's here and what it's all about to the people. You know, the demon shows up in the synagogue to kind of address him. And, yeah, Jesus, be quiet just quiet and being thrown on the ground and, you know, then the demon leaving. And I did read where like, that was like a last ditch effort to hurt the person, but like the person, you know, the, the individual got up perfectly fine. This is, yeah. It came out yeah. without harming him. Yeah. But, uh, where was I going? The authority. There it is. Going back to, mm-hmm. <laughs> I lost myself in that tangent little roundabout. Uh, but going back to the second temptation, uh, we see Satan offer Jesus all authority, right? But here we then see that Jesus has all authority. That uh, And that's what the people marveled at because he has authority and power over demons. And who has power to do that? God does. Nowhere in like the Old Testament do you see this done by prophets where they cast out a demon or they command a demon. Uh, there's a lot of miracles that happen that Jesus does that, um, also somewhat happened in the Old Testament, like mm-hmm. the healing and stuff over nature and, and so on and so on. But there's no casting out of a demon in, in the Old Testament. So when you put it all into what's happening here and what the people are understanding is like, okay, we understand, and, and Luke has to write the word evil spirit. We've already covered that because we understand these demons as, uh, in a way, gods, the Gentiles, perceive them kind of as the gods. So when Jesus gives an order and one of them follows them, like this guy is like beyond just human. Mm -hmm. Like he, he is a, he is God. Like who else can, can command them? Uh, I, I feel like I always thought exorcism was more of a modern day Catholic thing. Uh, but when I started looking into it, it apparently was done a lot back then, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Josephus talks about a guy who cured people by using a root in a set ring, and he would hold it under their nose, and the the demon would leave the person. Uh, and 
Tobit, Tobias burns the heart of a liver of a fish as part of an exorcism. Um, I remember watching uh, Chosen, The Chosen, and Nicodemus, one of the first things he's going to do in like that first episode is try to like get the oh, yeah. demon out of yeah. Mary. Uh, so people were doing it, but they were doing it all through like, you know, the hocus pocus, the abracadabra type things. And here Jesus is just like, be quiet, leave. And it happens. And that's like, that's the authority and the power of what, the, what we're seeing here in Jesus. Yeah, which isn't to say that those methods weren't capable of working at times. Right, right. They were. But, it seemed like they would. But yeah. just that Jesus doesn't need to do that. Mm-hmm. Like, he just has the authority. I was going to say, and it was more of a question, because you're like, here we have Jesus. He's He has all the authority. And it just, at this point, just being fair to, like, discovering the Savior and just, like, who he was and is and, you know, throughout this, he doesn't yet, though, right? Because he doesn't have authority over death yet. Right, 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 yeah. And so, like, isn't it only after the resurrection? The resurrection that he is gets. Like, all authority's mm-hmm. been given to me. So right. he does have authority, but even here, it's just like what the Father is doing. It's going to get in some weird Trinitarian. <laughs> like, you know, what the Father is doing through right, him to yeah. do these things. But there is a level of authority that is given to him mm-hmm. that he can't have it all now if it's given to him later. But there is authority here. But there is authority where yeah. people could see him be like, don't need to split the hairs on things. Yeah. You just said all authority. And I was like, I don't know if that's fully, fully, right. but I wanted to like work it out live because. Yeah. the It's the authority he has, I think that like, and you see it, the authority and power. Mm-hmm. And that combination is what really is just like the people are marveled at. This is what they're, they can't explain. It seems like this is what they're like. Oh, we've never seen this before. We've never seeing someone with just the word and gone. Which, and looking at this scene, just reading it, is like, oh, he cried out in a loud voice. It's like, this demon was screaming. Mm -hmm. Like, top of the lungs screaming. Like, if you are anywhere near, like, screaming, and then you have this interaction, and it's an interesting thing to me, like, oh, how this is playing out? We've got, the, I don't think I've ever seen it. I might have seen it, but something like Clash of the Titans or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or any of those types of movies where it's like, oh, the gods are in mm-hmm. battle against it. Like, that's what's actually happening right here. Mm. Like, this is battle. Like, yeah. here's the God of heaven coming down and like battling against demons on earth. Right. Again, I feel like I'm so disconnected from how some of this is actually playing out. They're like, I'm not seeing it that way. Mm -hmm. They're like, this is full on demonic forces just came up head to head. Like, what, you come to destroy us? And he's like, shut up. (laughs) Yeah. Dang. You know, because it doesn't seem as dramatic Mm because like, oh, you didn't pull out your sword? Right, right. You know, it's just like the word. But even that's even more so. Like, think about when we watch like Dragon Ball or something and it just Mm -hmm. like, you come across the dude who just like so much more like power level is just mm-hmm. crazy. And like someone tries to go up against him. He's like, are you kidding me? Like, let me just flick you right now. Right. Like, yeah. you're, you're done. Mm-hmm. And it's just, we're like, I don't know. Like, we know that's where they were in amazement at the authority and the power. Like, what is going on here? Because it is just an insane amount of authority and power. Yeah. It, well, as you were saying, Old Testament prop, like nobody just this just doesn't happen. Right. So to really get the perspective, like discovering a savior, just like if we're looking at Jesus being the savior is like him having the authority and the power in this way is uh, I'd say that's a pretty big qualifier. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I completely agree. Um, I'm, You want to call an audible real quick? Yeah. Let's add 38 through 44, whatever we're covering next. Okay. And then I could just finish off with what I'm about to say and yeah. we, we could wrap up this demon thing. All right. Uh, the, so I, I did have like, the, I talked about this rant that I had. Yeah. It led from a conversation with Justine because this deliverance thing and all these people casting out demons on TikTok or Instagram and all that stuff has really kind of, it rubbed me the wrong way. I just feel like I, and maybe I'm wrong, but I'm going to just say it rubbed me the wrong way because I feel feel like it comes when you study the Bible more and understand demons and what they really were. It changes from what's happening today, like our good friend Mark Driscoll. Uh, But 
in the New Testament and anywhere I could find a demon, it's prophesying. It's causing mute, blindness. Um, it's got super strength, a, a, a strength that like it seems unearthly, right? Like they, they would tie up the dude and break off his chains. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know I, I read that there's a spirit of prostitution, but like I don't feel like there's the demon of greed or the demon of laziness or the demon that makes me watch pornography. When I look at those things, that's where, like Paul says, the spirit, uh, the 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 works of the flesh are obvious. It's greed, it's malice, it's lust, mm-hmm. and I feel like when people are like going to these things to be like, I need to be delivered from my greed uh, because I got a demon of greed in me. It's taking away from part of the accountability of saying I've got something to work on myself. It's making it like this is the quick way to get rid of it. Like there's all these demons out there and I got stuck with the lazy one who wants to sit on the couch and watch and eat pornography and eat all the time. Like I got that one. You too, huh? Yeah. (laughs) You know, that's the demon that's inflicting me. But in reality, that's my flesh. That's my fleshly nature. And those things take work. They take time to get rid of. They take time to prune and get, you know, those those deep roots out of our lives. Um but the demonic things, you know, the things that are casting out, you see, they're they're the things that are causing these people to like be shackled in in bondage to this tormenting pain. Um and I just feel like when we when we kind of like, oh, I want deliverance and this and that from these things, it's like now I don't have to take rest- it wasn't me doing it, it was the demon. It wasn't my desires, it was the demon's desires. And there's no accountability, which leads to no real repentance, I feel. Now, like I said, I could be wrong on some of this thought process, but it's just over the last few years of kind of just seeing it pop up more. This is what's started to like, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with why I saw it that way as wrong. But like, as I've kind of gone more and more in studying, this is where it's led me to. Hmm. I can see what you're saying. I mean, it's kind of that that meme of devil on the surfboard, right? Yeah. Like, I'm on vacation. That That's you. And I like how you did bring in that thing of like, hey, it's the works of the flesh are obvious and it is those things. So I'm definitely tracking with you there. I do wonder about it not being maybe like in some, like I can see in a lot of cases it not being about not wanting to take responsibility, but to where when there are like real addictions and stuff mm-hmm. going on and people are just like wanting and needing relief. And I hear what you're saying, it's just like it takes hard work, but it's like, as someone who did have some of those addictions for years, even trying to follow Christ, like, you know, and just like, Mm -hmm. that's what I've talked about before, fasting coming in and and different things um, taking root. But being in that spot of just desperation, of being like, if it's just my flesh, like, how come I'm trying to repent? And like, it doesn't seem like, Mm -hmm. you know, it seems like there's a power greater than Mm -hmm. that's taking root here. So just to be fair on that side, is like, I can see I was like, oh, there's something beyond me. I need God to deliver me from this thing. Like, which I guess that's kind of end of Romans seven, right? Who's kind of <laughs> delivering from this wicked, uh, wretched body. Right. Um, so on the one hand, like, I do think that there is like, Hey, people are, can be really struggling. And it's not that they're trying to get away from the responsibility. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes it's like, I'm trying to like, I, I just don't know. And you're telling me it could be a demon. It's like, yeah, sure. That lines up with my experience. Cause like, what the heck, man? But then also on the side of, yeah, is there a demon or a spirit of greed? But when we're looking at the thing of these demons, the the diamonds, the the Elohim of these other gods, and kind of how they would go to these gods to worship for specific things, right? Mm -hmm. And we've talked, I think Molech has like a thing to do with success and some different stuff, to where if you're seeking after a god who's saying that they're going to give you these things, like you become like what you worship. Right. Yep. So, yeah, if you're seeking after greed and those things are there, like, you know, wherever you're pointed Mm -hmm. towards and it's not pointed towards Yahweh, towards Jesus, then it's just like, I can see how you start becoming like that thing. And Mm. then it's like, yeah, how how do you transform away from that? Right. Because you've been conformed into that image. You've been molded into that. Yeah. So I can see even, even that side just like, yeah, is there a spirit of greed? No, maybe like you know, as far as like, oh, this is spirit of greed. But it's like, have you 
pointed your life in a direction towards that is what you are becoming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think slight distinction there. I I think like if we could be Christ-like in a pursuit of being, of knowing and finding more, discovering a savior, looking for Christ, uh, if we're moving in the opposite direction, what are we going to become? Not Christ-like, you know, like, Whatever those other things are that we're chasing after, right, whatever right, our right. idols are, whatever, like you said, I love that you said chasing after greed for things, you know, like that's what they would do anyways for that. And all of this is like, I'm not, it's not that I don't take demonic stuff seriously. I really do. Um, and I believe we all have to, because if not, you're going to end up like the seven sons of Skiva who got their butts kicked by demons and <laughs> lost their pants. You know, like that's just, if you don't take it seriously, that's what's going to happen to yeah. you. Um, Christ took it seriously, so we should take it seriously. But I'm also concerned that we've we've given it too much weight in areas of our lives. Yeah, I was just kind of hedge against like a couple of things, like yeah, you know, a couple of things I could see. But I definitely, on the broad stroke of things, agree with you. Yeah. So that was my my demon rant. It was more. I just feel like the people who are doing it are kind of scheming people. But that's my judgmental Chris that I need to work on for the next episode. So, I mean, you did say next episode, we're just going to punt from what we were going to cover. So right. what's the little bit of a teaser for what people have to wait a whole nother two weeks for? Oh, boy. A fisherman and a tax collector walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, there it is. So but I'll just leave it at that because <laughs> I feel like that's the best thing. I just like, I was just like, now in my mind, it's okay. The... The background of the existence of demons and a fisherman and a tax collector walking. Like, how are we going to fit all that together? Yeah. Wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't you like we'll to know? We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Chris. I'm Yordle. We are your church friends. Thanks for listening.